And Father God, we've come to hear a word from you, Lord. Yes, God. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Let your will be done, Father. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, give us receptive hearts to receive yes, that that you bring to us today. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your holy and righteous name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 So you all know my disclaimer. I'm going to give you what God has given me. Amen. Amen. It was such a blessing. To see Mother Betty up there this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Let her continue to sing until yeah. Jesus comes back. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Truly, God is good and He is worthy to be praised. And yeah. as always, I've asked the Lord, what is it that you would, what do you want to say to us? Amen. Yeah. So, a couple of things the Lord has been dealing with me on, but He kind of solidified it for me this morning. And it's to be content. Yeah. Yeah. To be content. Yeah. Right. To be content. Because what happens? What steals our content? Mm -hmm. We're looking at what somebody else has. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We're looking at where they live, mm -hmm. what they drive, mm -hmm. what they wear, mm -hmm. how their children behave compared to our children. Mm -hmm. We'll look at one marriage and compare it to another. But God is saying to be content, to be satisfied with the blessings that he has blessed us with. Amen? So Philippians 4 and 11, and I think I'm going to be reading verses 11 through 13. And I'm reading from the modern English version. And the word of God is reads, it says, I do not speak because I have need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know both how to face humble, humble circumstances and how to have abundance. Everywhere and in all things I have learned the secret, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things because of Christ who strengthens me. Yes. Amen? Yes. So what happens in, in today's society, bigger is better. We compare to where we live at. Psalm 23, 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And another version says, I lack nothing. So then we look at our life and we see what we have and we grow discontent because we're looking at what somebody else has, what they're wearing. And you know, people do this name dropping. You know, so just because my shoes don't have a red bottom, they still cover my feet. And I didn't have to pay almost a thousand dollars for it. Amen? Because just because you have it don't mean you have to plunge. Right? But the Lord is saying to seek first his kingdom and his and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. But people are seeking contentment in the wrong place. And Paul says that the, the church they wanted to help him, he says, whether you help him or not. I had everything that I need because I know how to be content wherever I am. And Paul was writing this from prison. And some of us are in a natural and a mental prison today, not recognizing who we are in Christ, not satisfied with how we look. If you have roles, then you have roles, it's okay. <laughs> Amen? You, There's certain things that I don't want to wear because I don't want nobody to see it. But this is the body that I have, and I thank God for it. The Lord is saying, be content. And this is a major problem with our young people today. Do you have the latest Jordans or the latest Nikes? I don't even know. Thank God we're past that phase. Amen? Amen. But this is what's going on. So the parents is like, I'd rather have them wear uniforms and you have to be com my children comparing what somebody else is wearing and then putting pressure on me to try to meet and keep up with that person. I can't do it. But being content. And that's what God is saying to us. And so somebody may look at your plate and you may just have one thing on it. You may not have a car, but you have shelter. You have to be content. I don't have to look at that person who may have the car, the vacation home. None of that stuff matters. None of that matters. 
what matters is that knowing that we can trust God and that he says that I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. He said that I'm going to supply all of your needs according to, your riches, to, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's his word. And that's what God wants us to stand on. And we have people that are suffering and that are generally hurting today bound by things that have been said and where they grew up or if they didn't have a father, don't know who their father is, whatever the case may be. But you have to remember that God is still in control. And yes, we make mistakes, we make choices, but even in that, his grace covers us. And we don't sin because of that. It's like we want to do better, we want to be better. You know, but the enemy will taunt though, the where is your father at? He's in heaven. Amen. He's watching over me. Yes, right. God, is, the Lord is my shepherd. I yes, shall not right. want. Teaching right. our children this. Yes. Because these are the areas that they're being attacked in. Yes. They're seeing this glamorous image on TV. Mm -hmm. And then po people are posting their highlights, the highlights of their life yes. on social media. Yes. But that's not their whole life. Right. You didn't know that before they made that post, they had just got into an argument with their husband. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we look at this and say, well, why can't I have that life? Or why can't I have that marriage? Or why can't my children be like that? Yeah. And the Lord is saying that even if you have that child that has a mental illness, or even if you have a child that has a disability, yeah. be content. Because yeah. right. he or she is a blessing yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. We complain when we have to clean up after our family, but thank God you have a family to clean up after. Because yeah. somebody yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? And we're going to move into Mother's Day, and that's just another day that the world uses to, for us to spend money. The Lord says, I honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. It's not restricted to one day. Amen? But we have to be mindful of those mothers, that do, women that don't have children. Amen? Because it helps them to find that contentment and show them the way to Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's look at John chapter 17. And so, the Lord already told us that in this world you're going to have tribulation. He says, but to be of the cheer, for I have overcome the world. The world wants us to seek after comfort. And when we're seeking, when we're looking for contentment via the comfort way, it's going to cause us to derail. It will cause us to compromise. Because what are you willing to give up to be content? You know, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice? And sometimes we sacrifice the wrong things. Yes. Amen? Amen? And God is saying he has to be first. Amen. First and foremost, we must listen to the word of the Lord. So let's look at John chapter 17, verse 15. And the word reads, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. And that was the prayer Jesus had for his disciples and for us that were coming. Amen? Amen. That he's like asking the Father, I'm not asking you to take them out. I'm not asking you for a quick fix. But I'm asking you to keep them from the evil one. Amen. Amen. And the way the evil one manifests today is normally a material thing. Because we're always seeking for something else. We have to have this because Mother Betty has. I have to go get that car because Mother Nadira has one. And God is saying, we have to be content. And we may look at someone because we may be in a three-bedroom house and they may be in an apartment and we're thinking that they're lacking and they're more content than we are. Amen. Because they know what God has done for them. Recognize that the blessing does come from the Lord. Amen? Whether it be in a hotel, it doesn't matter. God has provided. But we sit back and we judge. And you know, the world tells you you got to buy a house. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's nice when you have a family. It's nice. But it's also nice being able to pick up that phone and say, I need you to come and change the air condition filter. My phone breaks down and I don't have to pay for it. Amen. So it's a blessing on both sides. Amen. So if you're living in the house, praise God. If you're living in an apartment, praise the Lord. If you're living in a hotel, praise God. Because God has provided. 
And that's what God's trying to get us to do. We look and we compare. Yeah. The spirit of comparison yeah. is what steals yeah. our contentment. Yeah. That we're ashamed to say that this is where I'm living at. Mm. Yes, this is what God has provided for me yeah. in this season yeah. of my life. Yeah. And I thank him for it. That I'm content yeah. with it. Amen? Yeah. Okay, my shower may not be that big, but you know what? I have a shower. Yeah. And I thank God for it. And that's what God is trying to teach us today. Yeah. <laughs> to be content with what we have. Yeah. The way you look. Yeah. The way your body is. Yeah. Yes, is there room for improvement? Yes. <clears throat> but don't let the enemy steal your peace. Amen. By you judging yourself by someone else. Amen. Well, why does their yard look like that? And mine looks all dry. Amen? Amen. But are you putting the time in? Because we want the blessings yeah. without making the investment. Exactly. Amen? Know, know. We see Elder Phyllis shout and was like, I want to dance like that, but you don't know what God brought her through. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And why she's dancing yeah. and giving praise to God. Yeah. But God is saying to us today to be content. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Be content. The so lift of your hand. You want more hands? Just add it in. Amen. You don't like doing it? That's what some boss said. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's here. Amen. They have all kinds of stuff to make us look better. And we can exercise that. But God is saying, I want you to look into that mirror. And see that your design is original. Yes. And when he looked at everything he made, he said it's good. Yes. And he knew how little we were going to get, how big we were going to get, and he still loved us. Yes. Amen? Yes. And then, you know, you look at James chapter 1. And I did not give this verse to God, but James chapter 1. And it says, you know, we tend to complain. We tend to complain when trouble comes our way. But God, even this trouble that's come my way, you're still in control. Right. Right. You're still on the throne. Uh -huh. You're still the one that's in charge of my life. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he says in James chapter 1, let's look at verse 2. It says, My brothers, count it all joy mm -hmm. when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith develops patience. Amen. But let patience perfect its work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. Amen. So this trial that you're going through, mm -hmm. this situation that you're facing, the Lord says, count it all joy. Is it pleasant? No, it's not. Does it hurt? Yes, it does. Yes. But the Lord is saying, count it all joy. It all joy. Because in this situation, I'm working out some things in your life. Yes. I'm adding to your testimony. Yes. There are some people that you're going to be able to bless because you yes. went through this. Yes. So, be, so keep your focus on the Lord. And Lord, that even in this hard time and in this hard season, God, you're faithful. God, you're just. God, you're merciful. Because like Paul said, he cried to the Lord, remove this thorn from me. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient. And that's what God is saying to us today, that his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. We all have a story to tell. We've all come through some hard times. Some hard times. Amen? But the Lord is saying to be content. Don't compare yourself with anybody else. Be content where God has placed you. Churches compare themselves with, with each other. Well, how many people are there today? It doesn't matter. Whatever soul that crossed the door, as long as their soul was fed today, that's all that matters. It's not about the number. Amen? It's about quality. And it's about being able to come in and worship the Lord and thrive in his presence and have that liberty to speak in tongues, to prophesy as of God gives it to us. But what is happening today? The church has turned into a business. Yes. Amen. And the focus is business. Yes. And then they want to tell you how to be a millionaire. Oh. And it's, the Bible says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Oh, right. He didn't say there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But it's the love of it. And when money has you, that's bad. That's right. But what are you doing for the kingdom? Yes. How many souls have you touched today? How many hands have you out reached, touched, reached out to touch and to show the love of God today? 
Or are we sitting in our houses complaining about what we don't have? Why can't I have that car? Why can't I have that pair of shoes? Why can't I go shopping at that store? Because people name drop. And it's like, what is this all about? Because this stuff is going to wither away. It's going to wither away. An Audi is going to rust just like a Honda. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't matter what the name is. And so God is saying he wants us to be content. Amen? Amen. To be content. And now I'm going to use, you know, we had, when the Elliots, when they were looking for their home, you didn't hear them complaining. Mm. They came in here with a smile on their face. And when they were in the process of saving, it's like, okay, we're just going to bunk up here today. Three of y'all can be in the room. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Because we're working towards a purpose. And God was working towards a blessing for them. But you didn't hear them coming here complaining, why I got to be in that room with that person? <laughs> Amen? And now look at it. God is blessed because everybody got their own room. And God's timing. And God's timing. And we wondered, Lord, why did you do it beforehand? Because I had his, his timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. And all he wants us to do, let me see if you're going to praise your way through. While you're walking through this process, God is calling us to be content, to be satisfied with what we have. But we're, what we're doing, we're, we're taking our prayer time. God, I want more. God, I want more. I want a bigger house, a bigger shower, a bigger bathroom, another dress, another sofa, whatever the case may be. And it's a difference when you have a need when it, or it's just a want. So God, and so, and, and, and James, another verse says, let me find it for you. James chapter 4, I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. It says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Check my motives, Lord. When I ask for something, let my motives be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, in due time, you will fill these seats. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Amen. Amen. But we don't want these seats filled so money can pour in. Amen. And so that I can live a luxurious life. Because right. that's not what it's about. Right. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ mm-hmm. today. Right. People are giving their tithes and their offerings. Mm-hmm. And preachers are wearing it on their backs and on their feet. And driving on the road. How many houses do you need? How many bedrooms do you need? Amen. That's a different you got five children. Okay? So Lord, you know what they have need of. But me just wanting a 10 bedroom for what? Because I don't feel like cleaning all that. <laughs> Amen? And I'm at the point in my life right now, and I'm not old. I'll be 57 in August, but I'm ready to downsize. <laughs> Give me a little less space to clean. Amen? But people are always are striving for more. I need more. I need more. I need more. And it's like, for what? What are you doing with what you have now? When have you last given to a missionary? When have you last sown a seed to help someone else? And God is saying, you're not content with what you have, but you keep asking me for more. Lord, I want more members in the church. You don't take care of the ones you have. You're not praying for them like you should. Amen? Because this is what we're, we're called to do. We're to look out for one another. God sent us in for it. No, no, let God in your time. In your time, Lord. But to be content. Whatever season that you're in right now, be content. Praise God for where you are right now. Whether it's a one bedroom apartment, whether it's a hotel, 
a mansion, whatever, however God is blessed, because all the blessings come from him. Amen. Amen. And God says, I don't have a respect of persons, mm -hmm. but I know what you can handle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let something trip you up. Right. Amen? Yeah. So you one of my children, I mean, I can only bless, I, I bless periodically. Because mm -hmm. that's what you can handle. Right. But you have somebody that's so totally surrendered and totally submitted to God, and you see that. And you see that the Lord pouring out blessings upon them. God, why can't I do that? Because I gave you $50 the last week and you did not even put anything in the offer. Oh, my God. Or you saw somebody that had a need and you didn't even offer up anything. Amen. Let's be real before the Lord. Amen. Yes. Let's be real before God. And the Lord knows that if he gives me too much, I'm going to buy too many books. <laughs> it's a giving. I'm not going to tell you how many I have that have not read yet. But I do, I, it's like I have to keep it stopped because I have to make sure I have stuff to read. Amen? And my husband said, don't buy, bring another book in this house and she get rid of something. <laughs> then I was hiding them underneath bed. <laughs> Amen? But God is saying, be content. Look at your life and look at where you could have been and look at where you are now. Amen. That's right. And it's like, God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. When I look back over my life, I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I had my kids laugh because when I was growing up and we didn't have food, I loved a good lettuce sandwich. I ain't had no problem with it. Put some lettuce and mayonnaise on the bread. Woo! That was like eating steak to me. Amen? I ain't know no better, but it was, it was delicious. And my stomach was full. Amen? But now it's like the Lord blesses us with something and somebody gives you something. I don't know how dog. Why don't you bring me a bag of orange with some steak in it? <laughs> Recognizing when God is blessing you. Yeah. And being content. And it's amazing to me, you know, when you do try to help some people on the street sometimes, you try to give them something. I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going on because I did try. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But never being content. God is sending you help and you're still not appreciating. God is opening up doors for us and we're still not appreciating. Well, why can't he do this this time? And then people will compare Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, well, what did you get? It's that I'm here. I can breathe. I'm living. That's a blessing in itself. And I was yeah. talking to my aunt, Amen. my mother's only sister that's living. And she was telling me that every time she gets sick and she goes, she had to go to rehab. And she says, I thank God. Every time he takes me in there and every time he brings me back out. She said, I'm not going to. She says, I have nothing to complain about. And we complain so much. And we look and say, well, why not, Lord? Why can't I have this? Why does it have to come to my door? Well, why not you? Right. Because we're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh -huh. Daily. So the Lord already told us you're going to have trouble. We're not going to live this life trouble free. But God is saying if you keep your focus on him, he will carry us through. You may stand to your feet. Be content. And I know it gets hard. I know. It gets very difficult. The burdens that we have to carry. Those things you've been crying out to God about. And you're still waiting for God to answer. But the Lord is saying, don't give up. Keep believing. Keep having faith. Keep trusting Him. Because God is here. He says here, He is a very present help in the time of trouble. A very present help in the time of trouble.